Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Okay, we've got a great episode for you today. We're going to be talking about keyword and ad ad placement calculations for ranking with Amazon PPC. Our guest is the host of Seller Sessions, the largest podcast for advanced seller, advanced Amazon sellers. He is also the co-founder of Databrill. He manages PPC and advertising uh, automation for six, seven, and eight figures Amazon brands alongside his partner, Dr. Elias Whitehead. He is one of the pillars in the Amazon FBA community and hosts seller polls annually. You probably have guessed it already, but my guest today is Danny McMillan and we'll be getting to him in just a second. But before we do, just a quick word from our sponsor. Thank you, Sellerize, for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. Sellerize is your comprehensive solution for your everyday business needs. Everything you need to grow and scale your Amazon business is just one click away. For more information, contact Dima and his team over at Sellerize.com. And remember, Sellerize is with one R. All right, where is the boy wonder? Hello, how are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Fantastic. All right. Welcome to the Lunch with Norm podcast. Uh, welcome DK Kim and Rad. It's great to see you. Uh, welcome to our beer nation. Let us know you're watching in the comment sections. It's always great to see our bearded community. Um, as always, if you want to just start the show by smashing those like buttons, giving us the thumbs up and uh, sharing this out to any friends, family that might be interested. And uh, Michael, welcome, welcome, and Jessica Rabbits. Yes, I know, just on Facebook somehow, now I'm home. Uh, it's great that you're able to make it, Jessica, and we got a Facebook user as well. Um, yeah, so excited for this episode. Um, kind of just want to jump into it. We do have, a, it's going to be slightly shorter than usual, but uh, we're going to really cram it full of uh, good information. So stick around. Uh, we do have a great giveaway as well. Um, that we'll be announcing shortly. We do this every single podcast. So if you're new to the show, just hold tight and you'll learn more about how to enter today's giveaway. And uh, welcome, Ateeb. Good to see you too. And uh, yeah, we can jump into today's episode. All right. So just before we do that, just remember, if you do have questions, comments, throw them over into the comments section. Also, today we're going to do um, a little bit different format Danny's going to be doing a bit of a presentation. So uh, Andy's going to be sharing some slides. So sit back, relax, grab that cup of coffee, enjoy the episode. Welcome, Danny. Where are you? Hey, thanks. Hey, how, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay. So uh, I'm happy to see that uh, England is going maskless. What's that? Sorry. England is going maskless. Oh, maskless, yeah. Yes. I mean, I live in a village, so we, we, we don't see many people, but yeah. um, I suppose on the outside world, and I don't watch the news really, so yeah. I still see them in the supermarket, people wearing masks, I still put a mask on. I had COVID just before Christmas. I've, I've only ever caught it once, I've been lucky. But um, yeah, funny times we're living in, but we get on with it. It's that's absolutely correct. Hey, I know we've got just a short amount of time with you today. So uh, why don't we talk about the giveaway? What is yeah. the giveaway for today? Well, I'm doing, um, as you know, you've been before, Seller Sessions Live takes place every May. So on May 7th, we're doing Seller Sessions Live, but I'm also bringing Brandy by Women in the live arena doing a double conference. So Friday the 6th of May will be Brandy by Women Live, and then on the Saturday will be Seller Sessions Live. And so we'll give away a ticket, a free ticket, a conference ticket to Brandy by Women Live. All right. Fantastic. Awesome. Okay. So why don't we just get right into it? I know that you have a presentation. Um, you're going to be doing more of a presentation format than our typical podcast format. So Yeah, because it's quite technical. And if people for the playback, and I'll also be mindful of the people listening on audio, but sometimes having the graphics will help. Some people can just absorb the information and pick it up from there. But uh, I just want to having some images and stuff on the screen gives it a little bit more context. I think it's a great idea. All right. Why don't we just get into it? Cool. 
Okay, so basically this is how to rank with Amazon PPC. Obviously, there's many ways and different approaches what people do. This is some of the things that we do uh, on our own clients and stuff at Databrew. So first things first, let's talk about keywords when you're selecting for keywords. It'll make more sense later. But what I would say is never rely on search terms that do not appear on the brand analytics report before launching, right? Nearly all search terms that do not appear in the brand analytics report will have 10 or less searches per day. Of course, there are definitely exceptions to the rule. There's people with long tail and they'll, I've had these conversations before. But generally across the board, um, my partner, Dr. Ellis Whitehead and uh, data science team he was working with actually did a breakdown of brand analytics. And that's kind of the, one of the conclusions that they come to. Now, obviously, the brand analytics report doesn't contain every single keyword on the planet. But if you're only got in 10 searches a day or less and it's outside of the report, then this can be kind of a tricky situation. So whatever third party tool that you're using, one thing you can do is start by washing that data against brand analytics and then dump the junk. And the reason I say that as well is because sometimes you may like look at a product, especially on the US market, but it's long, lots more in terms of long tail. It doesn't really exist as much in comparable terms in uh, in Europe, but especially being the US's largest platform. So you might have a list that one of the third party tools give you based on an algorithm, which is uh, derived by search volume, which is obviously it's an algorithm without being exact science. Um, you might say have 50, 60 keywords there and you think, great, okay, I've got my top keywords, then I've got my mid tier and then I've got my long tail. But then you may find is that when you wash them and download your brand analytics report and do a comparable comparison, you only might find there's a slight amount of those in there, right? And with that in mind, it's obviously going to make you rethink your role your whole um, philosophy on how you're going to approach this. And especially if you don't want to get into the zero sum game where there's like two or three keywords and there's there's not any realistic mid tail keywords in the brand analytics report. And then you're only exclusively relying on the long tail. And the thing with long tail is brilliant. We've got clients that have, um, you know, three or 400 long tail search terms that have conversions a month, but they have a low amount of conversions or a low amount of units. It's very difficult to get to a statistical um, significance if you're taking long tails that are only converting once a month, three times a month, four times a month. Because when you take in to do a look back and try and work out what is the best way to optimize those keywords, it comes tricky because you're dealing with seasonality and all these different things. So you go for long tail, fantastic. Businesses work off long tail. It does work. There's no dispute in that. But the point of this is just to be aware up front. So what we're going to look at now is this is a breakdown from one of our dashboards where we've run some products in terms of looking at uh, building a rank period over an eight week period. So if your PPC is competitive conversion rates and generates enough orders, it will definitely boost up your organic ranking. So here what we see is each bar represents one week of data. Then in the left column, we see the average organic rank. So you can see that going downwards. Whereas the smallest bars show the rank one is as good as you're going to get. So that's when we look at on the screen here, you see where it says one, two, and one. They're the positions it's reached after an eight week period. Yeah, so the lowest denomination is equal to position one or two on this graph. You can see that the ranks move quickly towards rank one over the first month. In the remaining columns, we see impressions, orders, and spend. So you see the impressions going up, you see the orders going up, and you can see the spend going up. These are mostly trending upwards and possibly plateauing after the first month or so. And what you're getting here is an indication. So column number one, it's gone down to position number one on the final of the eighth week. You can see as the impressions it's grown as it's created more impression share. You can see the orders generally has increased up to 219 in this one over time. And you can see that the spend is starting to climb up. Later, I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to look to dial in back in to get your ACOS down um, using a, a couple of factors. 
So how would you do this yourself? Well, your listing should be very well optimized as conversion rates play a massive factor in, in success. We obviously know this, yeah? As a bad conversion rate will become a hindrance to your organic rank. So A9 uses uh, negative and positive labels. I've done a various different shows and presentations on A9 where I've taken um, the science papers from that was developed by the A9 team and also video footage from presentations from the A9 team and give it a breakdown. And part of that is negative and positive labels. It's too much to go into now, but this is to give you some slight examples from that data. So what we want to look at is conversion works on a continuum. So the algorithm is a multifaceted view of what a conversion is rather than what we read as a sale. Okay. So when a customer clicks on your product, you're effectively getting a micro conversion credit on that query. If the customer spends time on your product page, but doesn't bounce off, you're then getting another micro conversion based on time on site. The more time spent on the page in principle, the higher the engagement. So when a customer adds a product to car, again, it sends another positive signal. And what happens is Amazon uses this as a strong signal in a continuum of a conversion. So we always see conversions as that the complete endpoint, the checkout money paid. But if you look at this stage is what I've talked about now, we're talking about sets of micro conversions as it gets up to the final conversion. So whilst this is very basic breakdown, you can see that a conversion process is on a continuum rather than a static object. So if you're going to do this yourself, this is a very basic. I mean, you can do this at scale and do this across multiple products. But the ideal setup is one keyword, one ace in one campaign. So isolating like this means we can measure the top of search on a granular level. For sponsored products, top of search placement statistics are effectively on a campaign level. So just a couple of other things bringing into play here is the ranking algorithm compares many different rank factors, right? So these are two of them, okay? So if we look at what the ad placement algorithm and give you some basic observations here, one is uh, order history and two is conversion rate. So this is a conversion rate for a specific product listing and that said keyword. This is then compared to all of your competitors on the same keyword. And if you get a higher conversion rate through PPC sales, then you're gaining points on both of these metrics. And what we've seen in-house, uh, your relevance will get a boost from this. So let's talk about a few things here, including problems ranking with high velocity products. This comes back to the ranking algo. There are only so many ad positions or placements worthy of eyeballs, right? So for a high velocity keyword, with established ASINs that are already converted, it can be very difficult to break through and get any impressions, even with a phenomenal conversion rate. This is why you hear people bidding 20 bucks a click without getting impressions. So depending on your stamina, and if you keep going over time, Amazon's algo may determine to favor your campaign, but there's no telling how long that will be. So it could be that one or more of your competitors go out of stock which incidentally from there will give you a nice boost up. So when we break this down, what is going to be the answer here? Well, is there a special calculation? Well, the answer is yes, no, and then you mix in some common sense. So what we've done here, this is a chart that we've broken down. For those listening back uh, through an audio format, what we're trying to do here is if we break this down, the top line there, Norm, is K1 is keyword one. K2 is keyword two. When we look at the positions here, it's add position one, add position two, add position three on the top line. And then on the second line is add position one, position two, position three, and position four. Now, what we've done is we've laid this out like this. So I'm trying to give an extreme example. So imagine going after a high velocity keyword that's in position one, but does a thousand units a day. And then position two does 500, and then position three will be 250. Now, you're going to have to do a tremendous amount of work and spend a shit ton of money, excuse my language, if you think you're going to rank on that keyword coming in cold with no history of conversion on that new ASIN, right? But then when you look at keyword number two, 
you might decide, okay, these are mid-tier. Now, if I look to do this one, position number one is 50, position number two is 25, position number three is 10, and position number four is five units a day. So when you look at that and you go, hold on a minute. Now, realistically, I could probably sell five units a day. So I should be targeting the ad placement algorithm. Let's see if I can get to position number three or number four, right? So what we then do is then go, well, how many orders a day can a top of search placement generate? And so we express it as a, an estimated conversion rate of 20%. So to get to position number four, you might aim for at least five orders a day. If your conversion rate is 20%, then this could mean you've got five orders divided by conversion rate is equal to 25 clicks. If the cost per click is $5 for that position, it will cost you $5 divided by conversion rate was equal to $25 per acquisition on average or $125 a day, which comes back to the point of gaining the impression share and the cost of running expensive top search campaigns. And usually a market that's red hot, generally we have a higher cost per click. So how do we look when we launch with PPC and then taper off and know where our numbers land for break even? I showed you them charts earlier. It can start to get expensive. But once you've gained that position, once you've started to rank, once you've started to get sales through those keywords via PPC, which has a knock on effect because you've got a good conversion rate in general. Now, I want to just quickly point out that I didn't mention earlier on. We used to, back in the day, pummel our way with PPC spend, right? Conversion rate is important, but not as an important factor now, right? You can't pummel your way to the top now. If you've got a poor conversion rate, you're going to have a knock-on effect to your organic rankings. So it works against you. This is really important is why your listing's got to be very well optimized. And you need to really hit the target in terms of the keywords that you target, whether they're uh, head keywords, mid, uh, like mid-tail keywords, or they're long-tail. So what I want to get back to here is we want to taper off. So we've done that, that thing where we run it for eight weeks. We got it down to positions one or two in terms of organic ranking. And we made sure that we chose the right type of keywords that fits our budget and fits our realistic target of selling enough units per day yeah in order to get organic ranking uh, to a sustainable level now when you're pulling back it's going to come with a set of its own pros and cons so either way you need to pick your poison so you adjusting the bid out the gate will almost certainly affect your ad placement so what you'd look to do is start by pulling back on the daily budget versus decreasing the bid and maybe losing that position because if you imagine norm if you decided that you didn't change your budget you landed in the ad placement algorithm in positions number three or four for instance but that was at five dollars let's just say you go okay I'll, I'll cut my bids down to three dollars you're going to drop off the bottom because generally not guaranteed but generally because other people will be bidding higher than you so what you'd end up doing is you start to cap right so at least with budget caps your campaign will run in most cases but you'll lose advertising for the rest of the day after your budget is burned what that means is if you have set a certain budget what you're doing is you're reducing the budget the daily budget over time so there are going to be parts of the days there's good chance that you're going to burn through that budget but what you're hoping is you're starting where you're starting to cut back you're still having enough of a window to convert before your budget runs out. So you all could look at here is a hybrid version. So twice a day, manually, you can address, uh, adjust the top of search boost in your campaign. So let's say you start at 900% and then 12 hours later, you drop that to 0%. And then you're gonna to look to see if this makes economical sense here. So what you do is you'll play around with these factors. You're gonna find the sweet spot and to get your ranking costs under control as you taper off over that six to eight week period. Sometimes it can go beyond that, depending on the, the keywords that you targeted and how far and how much you had success in terms of ranking that in the, the top three or so, right? So if I'm going to summarize this now, 
competitive conversion rates and orders matter, highly optimized listings matter, and your conversion rate is on a continuum. So think about engagement, add to cart and clicks, and don't see conversion as a static object. So if we were to break this down again, if you're setting this up for yourself, one keyword, one ASIN, one campaign, because you need to be able to review your top of search reporting, right? Remember what we're targeting here around the keywords is we're looking at the ad placement algorithm saying, are we able to get uh, to gauge and get a position uh, and catch some low hanging fruit versus going after the really, really competitive high velocity keywords. Yeah. So high velocity equals harder to get impressions. I'm sure you've had this norm be before you've got no impressions, $10 a click, $20 a click and had no joy with it as well. So what we look for is to go for mid tail keywords based on ad placement position. And then what you're looking at is over that period of time is how to best to taper off for break even. And there you go. It's quite short there in terms of what I covered, but we can start to unpack that if you like, Norm. Yeah, sure. I, one of the things I was wondering, Danny, are we going to be able to have access to that on our in our show notes? Yes, I'll send it over to you. Okay, fantastic. Okay, first of all, why don't we just take a look and see if anybody's had any questions? I uh, yeah. haven't seen, I was looking at uh, full screen. So Kelsey, was there any questions that came in? Uh, we did have some questions. Um, let me see, this one is from S Green. How do you use the CVR metric when optimizing bids? Uh, because when you're lower the bids, uh, your placement decreases, which helps with the CPC but the CVR decreases, which means the ACoS will stay the same. Yeah, it goes back to my point uh, earlier on when I said, instead of decreasing the bid, you cap your budget. But your budget, that's like the enemy and the, the, the hero, if you like. You know, what you're trying to work out is you've got a budget that's $100 a day and you've got $5 a click. You know you've got some headroom in there to make some conversions. But what you want to do is you want to bring that down to $90, $80, $70. You want to retain the bid in order to retain your ad your ad position, and obviously, um, well, not obviously, nine times out of ten, top of search is where all the action is anyway. Anything outside the top of search is, in most cases, I, I always have to preface it because you have to look at your own data. In most cases, you're not going to get the same level of visit visibility, which will have a knock on effect to your conversion rate. Um, to S screen here. Are there some products that are just impossible to be pro profitable with PPC? When you get a favorable or ACOS, you just lost the overall rankings and market share. Here's the thing. Like years ago, when I started with Amazon PPC in about 2015, I was one of the first people to post a video to show the correlation. It's up on YouTube now. I've done like a 40 minute thing where I show three different products and the, the, uh, the correlation between PPC sales and organic rank going up and I shared all the graphs and stuff. A lot has changed since then. Um, I think nowadays, in most cases, but not all, you're not looking to use PPC for profitability. You're happy in a lot of times to break even. You know, right. um, I think in, in it, you there were there was a time where you could be quite profitable with PPC, but you have to adjust what you want to achieve like you're using ppc as a tool to gain rank in most cases and retain rank but then you've got to look at the ratio between uh your organic to ppc sales as well that's going to play a very very important role yeah 100 percent agreed okay and this uh um, I, i'm not sure many... yeah go ahead do you want to jump into Manny's question? Okay. Uh, what is your opinion on putting the most important keyword twice in the title? I don't believe that you need to put it in twice. Some people talk about density. Uh, I think it's just wasting on space. Amazon's A9 algorithm isn't stupid. It's not as sophisticated as, as Google, of course. But I just think it's wasting space in the title where it could have, uh, you could use for much better opportunities. Obviously, you can weave in the listing the density and stuff like that but i don't see keyword stuff in the title would make sense and it looks it can read 
if you're putting the words together or it's in a different context. But you know, when people separate, like it's a keyword, a comma, it's a keyword, a comma, it's a keyword. Right. Some people can be turned off by that as well, you know, because it kind of reminds them going back in the day, like meta descriptions for Google back in like 2008 or something, you know? Yeah, back in the day. Okay, let's let's talk about the the titles for you. You just touched yeah. on that, so you've got the keyword. Um, are are you putting benefits in the title? What are you doing? Because that's that's part of conversion as well, right? That engaging title. So, yeah. how dense are you? Are you putting one phrase in? Are you adding a couple of long tails in there? What are you doing? We varies. I mean, at the agency, we don't do the listing. I mean, if we get a listing and, and it's not converting, we will look at it. But generally, because we're we're strictly a PPC agency, we're not mm -hmm. a um, an all all encompassing agency that manage Amazon accounts. But what we've got to look at is that when you're looking at your search term report over time, you're always looking to see well what is generating the most sales, what is the most relevant keywords because i think some of the problems ha that people had i've done a show uh, on it last week is the approach to you're using your keywords but some people don't even look at the search results pages and see does my product actually fit you know or they'll use lots of gift keywords and they've just launched um the thinking that would be great putting in, in into the title but a lot of the time uh, these products have got a lot of reviews and the other thing is the conversion rate can be let's just say on average a listing just throwing arbitrary numbers let's say a listing is a 10 percent conversion rate well gift keywords might be like a four percent conversion rate yeah so you got to think that gift keywords are, are, are good to test but they are not searchers intent so if you search for I don't know, uh, gifts for men, for instance, and you had gifts for men in the title and you're hoping to rank on that, you may turn up and you might see a wallet. You might see uh, a chart like a phone holder. You might see a phone case. You might see some T-shirts and it's a bunch of disparate products. And what you're looking at is like, well, the searcher is looking for ideas. That's why they're saying gifts for men because they do not know what they want. Right. So again, it's how you weigh off the strengths and the benefits of that. Okay, very good. Kels, what's the next question? Okay, um, let me see from Andy. Uh, what do you like to do when you have no orders on a highly relevant keyword? If you've got no orders on a highly relevant keyword, then you're going to look at your listing and, and take an honest assessment against what... Um, what the what the other competitors are i think the common mistake that people make as well is that they'll go after keywords and they might actually look at the search results pages but they're not looking at the average price of the product on the page so let's just say you want to get in you want to use ppc to rank to positions one two and three for instance a lot of those positions might be 6.99 8.99 10.99 and your product might be 22.99 so even though you're targeting on that keyword it's highly relevant your price point, and I still believe with Amazon, yes, they like good quality. Yes, they want a premium product. But if you're not Nike or uh, Adidas or anyone else, why would someone spend double the amount of money on that product? So another thing that people should look at is, is the keyword that's super relevant relative in price to and comparable to the other products as well? The idea I would believe, and it's very hard to do for most people, is the holy grail. Can you make a premium product and charge less than everyone else? It's not very easy, but that's a win, right? Because the customer gets value for money. And I think we get into a stage where when researching products, sometimes you can uh, you're, you underestimate your costs. And then suddenly people will turn that into a premium product because that's the only way of putting it out by increasing the sale price of the product. Yeah. And so that things like that can work against you. Um, so yeah, to troubleshoot your listing, look at the compare the average price of the page. Obviously, the common ones that everyone knows, and everyone's smart enough on Amazon. You don't have to tell them that customers eat with their eyes. If you've got shitty images um, and you've got a poor price, they eat with their eyes and they're looking at the price. It's going to have an impact on click rate, click through rate, and conversion rate as well. 
but yeah, the one big thing to take away from that is always look at the average price in the page, regardless of how super relevant the keyword is. If you're not getting orders, it takes you 20 seconds to look, run a tool and say, right, the average price on the page is eight ninety nine, and you're selling it for nineteen ninety nine. That might be the problem. Yeah, one of the things that we'll take a look at too is you were talking about tiers. So, you know, three tiers, low, middle, high. Mm -hmm. And when we go out, um, especially on a launch, if we've got a perceived high quality product. So the trick is it can't be a garbage product that's taken on an iPhone that mm -hmm. you're trying to sell people as perceived value of being high won't work. Yeah. But if you've got a very high perceived value product that can run with the top tier, when I launch it, I'll either give it a coupon or something that'll bring it just under the top of the second tier. So mm -hmm. people see that they see that there's great value and that they'll, they'll buy that, that the product because it is a high priced quality product in that second tier area or very low first tier. What do you think about that? Can you rephrase the question? Yeah. So yeah. Sure. About three, three tiers. Yeah. Okay. So I'll give you an uh, example. Dead Sea Mud, we've got Dead Sea Mud, eight ounce, 697 going out to 14. You got the mm. second tier roughly around 20 to 40. You got the third tier going at around uh, uh, 60 to 90. Yeah. So my product, let's say, looks fantastic. It can compete with the high tier products mm. at 60 to 90. But what I'll do is I'll flip it down with a coupon that it shows that it's $74 yeah. and it's coming out at the 40 or the 59.99 rank. And yeah. so people look at it and they're looking at these second tier products, but they see that your product competes with those higher price first tier products. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And going back to your point, coupons are a great idea. If you want to launch, instead of adjusting your prices, you know you could lose a buy buck to depending on that. It can be a bit wafty there. The second thing is when you're using a coupon, I think the average coupon clip rate, i.e. those who use the coupon, is 66%. So you still got 34% or so to play with. You know, in terms of um, there might people see the price and you look at the conversion signals as well in terms of color conversions yeah in terms of conversion optimization when that badge is on there versus others and it's standing in green or it's standing there in orange that makes people want to click as well and so there's attributes of the click-through rate they're seeing the value for money there they see it's a deep discount they're shopping for a deal these all these things can make an impact it's not guaranteed across the board and going back right. to the clip rate if that's 66 percent then you're not actually giving a $5 discount on that product every single time. It's only 66% of the time, right. which is still a higher number, but yeah. it's, you know, where I'm coming, it's horses for courses. Well, you, you know, and you're thinking, I, I'm talking about, you know, going out there with launch too. And, and there's a lot of people that gave rebates and you'd pay the extra 20 bucks or whatever it was going to be on top of that. So it's just another way. It's actually cheaper to do mm -hmm. it this way than it was to typically launch with, you know, I call it concierge style rebates. Yeah. So, um, Danny, I think we've got a couple more. I'm just watching the time for you, too. Yes, here. no worries. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question from Andy. Uh, what are the good slash bad CVR that you're seeing right now? There isn't such a thing. Well, there is obviously a com bad conversion rate. I mean, some people can have 20, 25%. You know, that's good. Very good. Some will have 10. It's going to be the nature of the business. But you're going to have people in places like, uh, the baby category where there's a lot of window shopping. So there's a, a lot of cases, the conversion rate are really low. You need to work out your conversion rate for that category and comparability to the products that you, um, that you, you're, you're um, putting onto the marketplace and what other people are up to as well, you know? So it's hard to say what is a, a good conversion rate. I mean, you're always going to see people on Facebook saying, yeah, I've got 40% conversion rate which is great, but then they're getting that conversion rate. It might be that there's not much in terms of sessions, you know, um, and people visiting the listing. It's just a good value product. So therefore the conversion rate is high because the sessions are lower. Yeah. But um, I think for, for a lot of people depend on category, it can be 10% and up is, is good. You don't want to be sub 10% uh, if you, can avoid that but in some cases depending on your margins and stuff it can work 
but that really, you know, off it obviously at scale. But um, it just it's very hard to say, yeah, that's a good conversion rate when you've got all these different uh, product categories which would have uh, different conversion rates to that. And obviously, when people put it out on online, sometimes they they uh, massage the numbers as well to make it look better. So you don't always know if that's exact science there. All right. Next. Okay. Um, so this one is from uh, Lucia. Uh, how about the same keyword in separate campaigns in broad and exact at the same time? Uh, will it work? In what respect? All right. So you if mean you can that clarify. That... Well, it, de it depends on how you want to look at your statistics as well. If you're in the same ca campaign, you're going after top of search, that can start to be a bit a little, little bit confusing. So it depends on what your your goals are. Um, I mean, at the agency, like I don't work under the hood anymore. I've got a team that does all that now. But we tend to work with broad and exact and, and uh, skip phrase match because the way that Ellis sees it as a data science is like pushing around extra data. Um, obviously, it can get expensive unless you've got a really sophisticated way of dealing with um, negative keywords, which we do. We have a very sophisticated tool that builds out these lists, like hundreds of them. So it, it's it's fine for us to use broad, but it's probably beyond a lot of people to manually to go through to them limps to, to deal with it. All right. Okay. All right. And then um, we just have a couple more uh, okay. from Atib. Uh, I think this is do is a sudden decrease in bid um, decrease the bid throttle for impressions? Well, if you think about a bid is there to place to go into an auction. So if you then drop out in terms of where all the activity is, i.e. top of search, page one, then that's going to have an impact. If you drop heavily, then you're not going to be in those allotted positions. Therefore, it's going to have impact on your visibility. Okay, great. So I think that's it for the questions for now. Um, yep. I do want to just let everyone know that we do have a Wheel of Kelsey happening. Um, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Uh, post that into the, the comments. We've already got tons of entries. And it's for a free ticket uh, to win a, uh, the Branded by Woman event on May 6th. Uh, if you take two people for an extra entry. Um, so if you're new to the show, just comment hashtag Wheel of Kelsey in the comment sections. And uh, yeah, that's it. Nice and easy. All right. Danny, you're going to mm -hmm. have no stress. You're going to no be stress. able to be on your call in time. Yes. <laughs> well, I've got to sort that out because of the Vegas. We're all, you're, you're coming to Prosper, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, we just had, I mentioned to you, we're just having some problems with uh, the venue. So we're uh, in, in about eight minutes. I've got to go on and renegotiate from what they uh, presented to us, which was uh, unexpected. Oh. But it should be fine. It's just there's a few things that we need to tie up the loose ends. So I would have to drop a jump off in seven minutes. Yeah. Okay. So what are you doing in Vegas, Norm? Oh, I, you know what? It's up to Tim. He, he, he plans everything. And then I yeah. just follow, I follow on his coattails. So yeah. no, I, I think I'm going to end up going down there a bit early. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, there's usually some good workshops going on there. Um, yeah. what I like about this, Danny, is that it's this whole networking thing again. Um, yeah. you know, I can't stress it enough that you get to go out. That's how we met. Yes. You know, we ended up sitting beside each other, uh, at a steakhouse. <laughs> Was that in Vegas as that well? That was in Vegas at the Bellagio. That's right. Kevin King took us. Kevin out, King, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, but you know, that's the perfect event to go to uh in North America. Of course, yours is always the most important over in Europe. Of no, course, no, right? it's not. <laughs> if we go to America, that's why I fly in all the Americans, because we we're starved for it in the UK. And I think that's why I've been lucky to sell out the last two shows and the Christmas party and stuff. Um, is because we fly everyone in, you know, and people coming from around the world. But um, that that most of it is concentrated in the US. So we look to the US and see all those big events. That's why I'm like, you know, really happy to. I've got a world tour this year, and I'm I've got three gigs at Prosper. Do you know what I mean? I never thought 
two years ago, I'll be on the Prosper stage, let alone three times, you know? Yeah. So, um, no, we, we, we look to the U.S., you know, and this is why we bring in the best talent. Yeah, very good. And I've attended your last uh, seller sessions live. I yeah. uh, thought it was fantastic. Uh, if you do get a chance, uh, get out there because, uh, like Danny says, he presents top quality people. And uh, it's just a great way to, to network. And if you've never been to London, it's always good to be in London as well. Just kind of. And it should be a bit warmer in May as well because we've done it because we, the COVID are moving it seven times. The last window we had last year, which was October the 9th. So. Yeah, London's not as not as nice when it's freezing cold. I thought it was balmy, balmy mm. warm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Danny. Well, right. again, how can people reach out and, and get in touch with your agency? Um, just go to datebrill.com if you want to go to seller sessions, sellersessions.com, brandedbywomen.com. Uh, and obviously we do seller poll, which is around September to October each year, which is sellerpoll.com. Fantastic. Now, I do want to say one thing. Mm -hmm. Danny McMillan is the guy who got me doing the, the, the podcast. We were kind of just wishy-washy, like Kelsey and I, This uh, we're doing some Facebook Lives. Talked to Danny. He says, you got to go in two feet, get content, go for mm -hmm. it. And uh, anyways, Lunch with Norm is 100% on you. And I just want to thank you. you for... No, you've done the work. I said three well, things. I... Consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Consistency, respect your audience and, and and content first. And you've done all that and you'll blast past 100 episodes. And what happens is most people will do 30, 40 podcasts and then give up. But I said to him, you've got to do 100, 200, 300, because it takes time to really build. And you've taken that on board out of six to eight people. When we was in COVID, I had loads of people come to me, say they're going to start a podcast. You're still standing. You're still got, you're still doing it because I think you've seen what we did with seller sessions. We're up to we're coming. We're heading towards 900 episodes now. That's a lot of episodes. Wow. But it's just consistency. That's all it is, you know. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate it. I appreciate you as well, and I will be seeing you in Vegas. You too. Take care. All right. See you See later, you Danny. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody. So it's not the end yet. I wanted to make sure Danny had time to prepare for his call. Uh, all right, Kelsey, Will of Kelsey. All right, yes, uh, we got a couple more entries. Also, I just want to shout out, uh, Norm, I think you know this name, uh, Dozer. Oh, you know, my Dozer. little brother. That's right, from the artillery. Yeah. Um, so he's, he actually, uh, Jerry Mendoza, uh, entered the Wheel of Kelsey. And oh my he, uh, gosh. Wants to give you a uh, hi from the Royal Canadian Artillery. Um, yeah, so great to see you. Uh, and uh, yeah. I, I got a, a line, bubble, bubble, line. He'll know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so just uh, any last minute uh, entries, you still have a little bit of time. Hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, um, and you'll win a free ticket to Branded by Woman happening May 6th. Um, so let me see. Okay, I think we got everyone. All right, so ready for the Wheel of Kelsey? We are ready. All right, here we go. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. It's just double checking. All right, I think we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna shuffle up my names. And give this a spin. So uh, it's k at lunchwithnorm.com. And if you are the winner, and it looks like the winner is Jeff. All right. Congrats, Jeff. That's an awesome, it's an awesome yeah. event. You'll love it. Awesome. So Jeff, just email me k at lunchwithnorm.com. Uh, this event is in the UK. So you'll have to obviously like pay for travel and stuff, but your ticket to the event is uh, free and on yeah, and, I, and I'm not sure we got to check with Danny if there's uh, if it's digital as well. Yeah. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll let you know. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, fantastic. All right, let me just see here. I think that's it for today. No special announcements. What do we got oh, going actually, on? Yep. Um, so I made a couple of posts, uh, but I decided to kind of take up some TikToks. So we have an official Lunch with Norm TikTok channel. So if you guys want to check that out, I've been posting a couple times a day. 
and <laughs> I'm having some fun with it. So go check it out. It's just uh, if you search lunch with Norm, one word, you'll be able to find it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. And uh, if you have any ideas, just send it over. We're having some fun. And then Norm's also on TikTok as well. Um, he's, of course, more educational. And but uh, so this is the some... Kelsey TikTok channel. That's right. That's right. Uh, okay. So check that out. It's um, dangerous. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's joining us on uh, Wednesday, Kels? Or uh, Monday? Uh, Monday. So we have a new guest. Uh, his name is Greg Reed. He is a best-selling author. Um, he even has a Netflix show, I think, out right now. Um, but he's the author of Millionaire Mentor. Um, yeah. So a mindset, that's brand new. Kels. Millionaire Mindset. Okay. I'm um, sorry. Um, but he's going to be talking about uh, the mindset behind an entrepreneur. And uh, yeah, check it out. Um, also, if you have any uh, suggestions for future guests and topics, let us know. You can always email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. I, I have to yeah. say that we've got a bunch of guests coming on that are very unique that uh, I can't wait to get them on. There is just a handful. They It's not like they're on this um, speaker circuit. You know, these are people that are incredibly intelligent, that um, uh, just have some really great information. So they coming on next month. Uh, we're starting to get some really new, cool people that uh, can help out as well <clears throat> to build up your knowledge for online, the online world. So anyways, yeah, like Kelsey said, if you know of anybody, just let me know. That would be fantastic. Also, Kels, we need to run our commercial for our sponsors. So hit that button, please. Thank you, Z.co, for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. Are you looking to take your e-commerce business from local to global? You can with the help of Z and their brand new app. That's right. You can track live shipments with push notifications, get detailed lead times for each stage of your shipment, and store all compliance and VAT reclaim documents in the palm of your hand, all while listening to Lunch with Norm. Ready to expand your e-com empire and take your Amazon FBA business global? Use the link in the description to learn more about Z's new app that's now available on desktop and mobile. That's Z.co, Z-E-E dot C-O. All right. So I think that's about it for today's episode. That's right. right. That's it. So um, hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, um, topics, again, just let me know. Kay at lunchwithnorm.com. Thank you, everyone, for... Uh, <laughs> Hashtag son of a beard. Love it, Andy. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for all the comments and questions. And uh, I'm really loving how our Facebook group is shaping up. So if you guys are interested, that's uh, uh, Lunch with Norm, Amazon, FBA, and E-commerce Collective. Go check it out. Um, it's completely free. It's a free community. This is just your chance to kind of meet with the different Beer Nation members. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a really fun place. Uh, if you have any memes for Norm uh, with his glorious beard, you can just post them over there, let us know. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions about Amazon e-commerce, that's the place to do it. Um, we're always there checking it out. So uh, I think that's it. Perfect. So again, I wanna thank Danny for coming on today. Um, and I wanted to just let everybody know, know to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. And thank you for being part of the community. Thanks for, you know, just putting up with me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. More, more like Kelsey. Kelsey, you have to put up with. But uh, hey, just thanks for being part of the community and enjoy your weekend. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.